so here we start with our topic the topic titled sparse antenna array design so as per as this particular title is concerned we have the four terms first one is sparse second one is antenna third one is array and next one is design here so of course we are going to see what are the design aspects the sample designs we shall discuss for the type of the antenna here so for better understanding you should have clarity of what exactly the antenna mean what is antenna see antenna is just like a sensor that is carrying the inquisition of the information or data from something basically into the wired form or in wireless media the existence of energy is there in the wireless medium we have the energy in the form of electromagnetic wave the electric field intensity and magnetic field intensity we designate them with the symbols e and h here whereas in the wired medium we have in voltage and current form so basically the antenna can also be treated as the interface that converts e and h into voltage and current whenever it is acting as receiving antenna and the conversion of voltage and current into the electric field intensity and magnetic field intensity in turn the electromagnetic wave when it is working as transmitting antenna here now for better efficiency of transmission of information that means signal from one place to another place if we join multiple antenna units together we call it to be the antenna array so here you see the typical antenna design monopole antenna we have different different aspects of study for the antennas for monopole dipole then the we have dish antenna so next to that let us have the study of the antenna array but into this sparse sense here few of the components if they are missing what is the benefit that is definitely we are going to discuss for the design aspect of the same here so if we talk about the linear phased antenna arrays here we have the typical illustration for the same you see at the bottom there are the antenna units here those are equally spaced from one another and they have the phase linearity among themselves that is why i call it to be linear phased antenna array and mostly these are found used into the radar application sonar application ultrasound imaging seismic signal processing and a lot of applications here so basically if instead of having the complete arrays of the antenna units here if the sparse arrays are there with certain of the elements removed that is basically beneficial from economical point of view and also there is a mathematical similarity between the far field radiation pattern for such a linear antenna array of equally spaced elements and the frequency response of the fir filter that is why mostly this similarity among the two is utilized for the design of the sparse array antennas and to benefit with more efficiency of the radar sonar ultrasound imaging seismic signal applications here so let us have the design of the sparse arrays with specific beam patterns here mostly we will be having the focus of designing the sparse arrays for the ultrasound scanners here the typical application we shall be discussing so in this regard let us consider a linear array as we have illustration here that is in general capital n number of times the array elements are isotropic they are equispaced from one another and the inter element spacing is denoted by small d letter here and here we have the location for this particular linear array denoted by x of n that we can have n into the space d here and n is greater than 0 but less than or equal to capital n minus 1 here so now talking about the far field radiation pattern at an angle theta as we see here that will be away from the broad side here but normal to the array here 
here be expressed in terms of capital P of U here. So mathematically it is described as the summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 or W of n multiplied by e to the power j times 2 pi times u upon lambda into d into n here. So in this representation W of n is basically the complex excitation or weight of the nth element of the linear antenna array. Lambda is the usual notation for denoting the wavelength and u can be regarded as sine of the angle theta here. So here we have the function denoted P of u that can be considered as the discrete time Fourier transform also if you match it with the formulation here. So this will be the discrete time Fourier transform of W of n as you match it with the formulation of and this is with the frequency varying and that will be given by 2 pi times u by lambda into d here. Now as we are having the array element, let us say it is weighing w of n as a function of the element position, it will be called as the aperture function. So for uniformly excited array, we have w of n is equal to a simple constant here and that time the grating lobes in the radiation pattern will be avoided if we satisfy the condition that d is less than or equal to lambda by 2. The typical value of d to be equal to lambda by 2 if it is there, the case is that the range of u is between minus pi and pi here. So this is what a complete discussion we can go for for the antenna. Uh, now let us focus on to the design of such arrays in a simple way by treating the problem as design of the effective aperture function here. The aperture can be denoted by w suffix e double f of n here so effective aperture function so in short the effective aperture function can be found out by the convolution of the transmitting aperture function and that of the receiving aperture function here so transmitting aperture function here we denote on rhs omega sub x t here w sub x t here of n and that is convolved with there should be the asterisk inside the circle for convolution operation with the w sub x r for receiving of n here. Now here if the number of elements in the transmit and receive arrays if we are considering the complete array without any missing element here. So that time capital L and capital M the number of elements n in the single array with the effective aperture function. So we have w sub x e double f of n to be l plus m minus 1 here and the design problem is therefore to determine the transmitting aperture function w sub x t of n and for the w sub x r of n for the desired effective function here. So let us discuss now the polynomial factorization approach first of all. So if we consider the z domain, we have the representation of effective aperture equivalent given by p suffix e double f as a function of z that is equal to pt of z multiplied by pr of z. In this representation, p effective of z is equal to the summation n is equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 for the effective aperture w sub x e double f of n into z to the power minus n whereas pt of z is equal to the summation n is equal to 0 to capital L minus 1 for the transmitting aperture w sub x e of n into z to the power minus n and next to that for the receiving case we have p sub x r of z that is equal to the summation n is equal to 0 to capital M minus 1 w sub x r of n into z to the power minus n here. So here the sparse antenna array design problem we formulate as the factorization of the polynomial p sub x e double f of z into the factors p t of z and p r of z with the missing coefficients here. So first of all considering the design of uniform array for which we consider 
W effective of n is equal to 1 and by this point we can make the use of factorization by this particular formulation here we have P sub x e double f of z expressed as 1 plus z inverse the term is multiplied by 1 plus z to the power minus 2 this way the product is for the last term 1 plus z to the power minus 2 to the power k minus 1 where capital N the number of elements is equal to 2 to the power capital K here. Now let us discuss with respect to the uniform effective aperture function. So here the factorization approach as just now we have seen for the sparse array design we consider the case of n is equal to 16 and k is equal to 4. So we have p effective of z that is equal to here the expression 1 plus z inverse the bracket is multiplied by 1 plus z to the power minus 2 it will be further multiplied to 1 plus z to the power minus 4 and at last multiplied to 1 plus z to the power minus 8. So all these values are coming because we have selected n is equal to 16 capital N and capital K is equal to 4 here. So now we have the three possible choices for PT of Z and PR of Z confined to the transmitting and the receiving ends here. So let us have first of all design number 1. So in design number 1 we will be having PT of Z is equal to 1 whereas PR of Z is expressed as 1 plus Z inverse is multiplied to 1 plus z to the power minus 2 further multiplied to 1 plus z to the power minus 4 at last multiplied to 1 plus z to the power minus 8. This can also be expressed as 1 plus z inverse plus z to the power minus 2 plus z to the power minus 3. This way the terms are with the powers z to the power minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 minus 8 minus 9 minus 10 minus 11 minus 12 minus 13 minus 14 and at last minus 15 as we have started with z to the power 0. Now the second choice is design 2 where we write pt of z we determine to 1 plus z inverse whereas pr of z is equal to we start at the multiplication of 1 plus z to the power minus 2 with 1 plus z to the power minus 4 and at last with 1 plus z to the power minus 8. This results into the representation 1 plus z to the power minus 2 plus z to the power minus 4 plus z to the power minus 6 plus z to the power minus 8 plus z to the power minus 10 plus z to the power minus 12 and at last addition with z to the power minus 14. And the third option is where pt of z is the product of 1 plus z inverse with 1 plus z to the power minus 8. Whereas PR of Z is nothing but the product of 1 plus Z to the power minus 2 with 1 plus Z to the power minus 4. So the PT of Z expression will get to the form 1 plus Z inverse plus Z to the power minus 8 plus Z to the power minus 9. Whereas for PR of Z we achieve 1 plus Z to the power minus 2 plus Z to the power minus 4 plus Z to the power minus 6. So next to that, here we see the illustration where the radiation patterns of the transmit array shown by the dotted line and the received array shown by the dashed line is there for the two-way radiation pattern by the solid line here. So the radiation patterns have been scaled up here actually by the factor of 16 to make the value of two-way radiation pattern at u is equal to zero unity here. So this is for the design 2 I can say here as you see you will notice that the design 1 is consisting of the single element transmit array and 16 element non sparse receive array and therefore it requires a total of 17 elements here. Now as we are left with after this design rest of the two designs so they result into the sparse transmit or the receive arrays here. So for the transmit and receive aperture arrays and the two-way radiation pattern of the composite array here. So here we have to note that 
the grating lobes into the radiation pattern of the receive array are being suppressed because of the radiation pattern of the transmitting array here now we come to see the design 3 to be the most economic sparse array design of the antenna having the eight elements obtained here so the total number of eight elements here we have the transmit and receive aperture functions here we obtained as wt of n is equal to we have the elements 11 0000000011 whereas wr of n is equal to 1010101 here now by controlling the shapes of the transmit and receive aperture functions we can control the effective aperture function to be smoother here and this is by reducing the grating lobes here so for such a design of the sparse array pair having the linearly tapered effective aperture function we can have the selection of the effective aperture function p sub x e double f of z to be the product of p1 of z with p2 of z here p1 of z can be regarded as 1 upon capital r the summation n is equal to 0 to capital r minus 1 or z to the power minus n here whereas p2 of z is equal to the summation n is equal to 0 to s minus 1 or z to the power minus n now here we see the illustration of the effective aperture smoothing by the shaping transmit and receiving aperture functions as discussed here so we shall continue the discussion where for these illustrations to come true the number of elements in the effective aperture function is found to be n is equal to r plus s minus 1 the number of apodized elements into the beginning and at the end of the effective aperture function will be capital r minus 1 and the values of the apodized elements will be in general 1 upon capital r 2 upon capital r this way up to r minus 1 divided by r and moreover the parameter s will be satisfying the condition that greater than capital r minus 1 so considering the design of linearly tapered array selecting the value of capital r is equal to 3 and the value of s is equal to 8 that is resulting into the effective aperture function so here we have the illustrations for part a and part b here and the effective aperture function is given by w sub x e double f of n is equal to the set where we have the values 1 by 3 2 by 3 1 1 1 1 1 1 2 by 3 1 by 3 and the possible design for the transmit and receive arrays is given by wt of n we have 1 1 0 0 1 we have 1 by 3 1 by 3 2 by 3 1 by 3 1 by 3 here now let us discuss the staircase effective aperture function so here the reduction into the grating lobes we can also achieve with the help of the sparse antenna array pairs having the staircase effective aperture function so for the design in such way the possible form is of the factor p1 of z that uh, is having even number of steps in the effective aperture function and the another case where odd number of steps can be obtained here we have capital p1 of z expressed as here we have 1 upon twice l plus 1 in multiplication to the square bracket that involves 1 plus z to the power minus k1 in multiplication to the bracket where involves 1 plus z to the power minus k2 further multiplied to 1 plus in this way the multiplication of the inside inside terms goes on as shown in this particular expression so the number of capital r elements here in the p1 of z expression can be 2 multiplied to the summation i is equal to 1 to l for k sub x i plus 1 here and for the staircase effective aperture function the number s of elements in p2 of z can be there satisfying the condition s is greater than this r here 
now the number of apodized elements into the beginning and at the end of the effective aperture function can be twice the summation i is equal to 1 to l for k sub x i in each case here and the values of the apodized elements can be listed and for the sparse antenna pair design the value of s can be the power of 2 here so let us have the example considering the design of the array having k1 is equal to the value 1 k2 is equal to 2 and s is equal to 8 so therefore we have the expression of e1 of z given by this so this is 1 by 5 times inside the bracket we have 1 plus z inverse multiplied to 1 plus z to the power minus 2 further multiplied to 1 plus z to the power minus 2 further multiplied to 1 plus z to the power minus 1 as shown in this particular equation we simplify it to the form 1 divided by 5 multiplied to 1 plus z inverse plus z to the power minus 3 plus z to the power minus 5 plus z to the power minus 6 whereas the expression of p2 of z can be given as 1 plus z inverse added by z to the power minus 2 further added to z to the power minus 3 added by z to the power minus 4 added by z to the power minus 5 further added by z to the power minus 6 and z to the power minus 7 so the effective aperture function will be given by w sub x e double f of n for the above two expressions of p1 of z and p2 of z the z having the values 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 2 times 1, then 0 0.8, 2 times 0 0.6, 2 times 0 0.4, and at last 0 0.2. And one of the possible choice for the transmit and the receive aperture function can be given. Here we have WT of n for the transmit aperture function. The set values 1 by 5, 3 times, then 2 by 5. 0 2 by 5 and again 3 times 1 by 5 whereas for the receiving aperture function the set can be denoted by w sub x r of n that is equal to 1 1 0 0 1 1 here so the corresponding radiation patterns we have already illustrated for this and this way we can have the design of sparse antenna array